Remember, net foreign liabilities are made up of two things. One of them is your net foreign debt. The other one is your net foreign equity. You need to know the difference between debt and equity. We do that in the balance of payments. Um, we do that in net foreign liabilities. So don't remember what the difference between debt and equity was. The, the idea of debt is debt is, is riskier for the business than equity because you have to pay back the principal and you have to pay the interest whether you're profitable or not. Whereas for equity, uh, you don't have to pay back the, the principal. So you, you issue shares, you don't have to buy them back ever. You can if you want, but generally they're not bought back. You do have to pay dividends, but only if you're profitable. Okay, so in that, in that sense, um, debt is very risky and you would think, well, why do companies ever issue debt? Why don't they just issue equity? The trouble with equity is it provides a controlling stake to um, the owner. So it's now an investor who actually can tell you what to do. The bank has some limited restrictions or they can put certain restrictions on you, but they can't tell you flat out what to do, whereas your shareholders can. Um, also, it gives them a stake in all future profits. So if the business is successful, they now have a stake to all of the future profits that you have. And in particular for an economy, if that means a foreign ownership stake has uh, an interest in all the future profits, that means the profits are going overseas in the future if it's a successful business. So that is um, one of the reasons why debt is preferred to equity. Also, debt's a lot easier to, to um, yeah, access to um, have transactions with. So you can issue debt, you can pay down debt quite easily. Issuing shares, buying back shares is quite complicated. You've got all these additional restrictions. Um, whereas with debt, you don't. Now, if we look at um, net foreign liabilities over the last, this is I think the last 30, 35 years, have a look at this bit here, the, it's the black at the bottom. That's your net public debt. So remember what I was saying earlier in the previous lesson that the government does or not borrow money from overseas anymore. They did used to, and it accounted for about 10% of GDP. Wait, um, so that was pretty much all, the government. The yeah. government. So the, the, the um, governments, government agencies, state governments, local governments, um, generally it was the Commonwealth government that would borrow the most. But they had a very large amount of, um, of debt, you know, 10% of GDP. Not, not as big as all the private sources, but still quite large. That's come down, but remember we had a crowding out effect. If they're not borrowing from overseas, if they're borrowing from domestic sources, those domestic sources of savings are no longer available for private firms. So those private firms, they have to go overseas and that's why you've seen um, a maintenance or an increase in net foreign liabilities. Um, so what's happened uh, since that time? Net equity is the one at the top, I believe. Um, and that one has, this doesn't go back far enough, but um, uh, net foreign equity was actually quite a, a large proportion of net foreign liabilities traditionally. And if you have to think about it, how did Australia conduct its trade and its finance traditionally? They would invite a foreign company in, Ford or Toyota, they would set up shop, they would provide the capital, they would provide the know-how, they would construct the manufactured goods within Australia and sell them within Australia to avoid the high tariff barriers. Um, and that was what Australia uh, promoted, that a firm would come in and set up and bring in its own capital to do so. But there were a lot of capital controls in place for debt, so you couldn't bring in uh, debt very easily. And it was hard to borrow money domestically as well, so there wasn't as much need for it. What you've seen in recent years is, have a look at this section in particular down the bottom. Um, there's been a huge increase in, uh, in net debt by financial corporations. And what that's telling you is it's banks going overseas, borrowing money, bringing it into Australia. And that's been the big increase. Okay? And it has allowed high levels of liquidity in the debt markets. It's allowed a lot of people to be able to borrow a lot of money. A lot of that has gone into uh, funding construction and property, which is very expensive in Australia, but also investment in businesses. Uh, and a lot of that has come from this. And you've seen that that has been the big growth area in recent years, not equity. Equity's actually shrunk a little bit. Is that because interest rates are so much higher than the rest of the region? Um, that is partly it. That's why so higher interest rates means that money comes into Australia. It's profitable to bring capital. Um, it is, it is. That's right. You look at Australia, even now when we have 2.5% interest rates, uh, around the world, there's zero to one percent. So you have a one and a half to two and a half percent premium by putting your money in Australia. A few years ago, it was four percent, and it was still zero to one percent in the rest of the world. So you had a, a three to four percent premium to bring your money into Australia. So very profitable um, to do so. Um, so let's talk a little bit about net foreign liabilities. Uh, net foreign liabilities can be broken down into two categories. So we've got our net foreign debt. That's loans with interest, where the principal must be repaid and net foreign equity. That's shares in companies which do not have to repay principal and where dividends are paid to investors if the business is profitable. And we talked about this already. 
Uh, there has been a big growth in net foreign debt since mm, financial markets were deregulated in the 1980s, that was around the world. Many capital controls were also lifted, so the controls on moving money from countries um, now don't exist very much. And remember, this is the one part of globalization that has seen the biggest um, removal of barriers to movement of money in this case. So the movement of goods and services still has some barriers. The movement of workers through migration has very high barriers. But the movement of money has very few barriers these days. Australia's net foreign debt was 6% of GDP in 1981. It rose to 50% of GDP in 2013. So you can see the big increase there. So this is debt. Big increase in, in net foreign debt in percentage of GDP terms. This is in 1981. It predates the graph that we saw earlier. Um, this was largely due to persistent current account deficits. So Australia's had current account deficits since the mid-70s. Consistent current account deficits and persistent current account deficits means Australia has to borrow money to fund it. That money has been in the form of debt. That debt has resulted in interest payments. Uh, those interest payments have resulted in um, higher levels of debt and the persistent current account deficits have also added to that as well. And our net foreign debt is now up to 50%. Um, where it hasn't come through, is in terms of net foreign equity, which we'll look at in the next slide. Um, now, too much foreign debt risks what's called a debt trap. You can have a debt trap domestically within a, a household. You can also have it at the national level. Um, a debt trap is where interest is repaid only by borrowing more money, which in turn requires additional interest to be paid in future. You require more interest to be paid in future, it adds to more debt that you have to borrow in order to pay for that interest, and it increases the size of that debt. And that's what some economists have argued that Australia has had. Because of these persistent current account deficits, foreign debt has grown from 6% to 50%. We pay for our interest with more debt, and then that debt results in more interest. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? But isn't that okay? Is that okay? So you think it's a good thing? Why? Because we're borrowing from external sources, not from Australia. We can default. We can default? Yeah, defaulting is not a good thing. Defaulting means that the yeah, cost of right. capital is going to increase investors Confidence in Australia is going to reduce. The reason you could argue it's a good thing is that most of that money has gone into investment. It hasn't gone into consumption. If you borrow to invest, it increases the productive capacity of the economy. It allows you to repay that debt in the future. It adds to your capacity to pay. If you use it for consumption, it does not. <coughs> um, that's right. So a lot of European countries like uh, Greece, um, Spain. that's right, were, and Spain were, quite often would borrow for consumption, not for uh, investment. So this is net foreign debt, let's look at net foreign equity. The difference here between debt and equity is equity does not need to be repaid. And you issue shares, you very rarely buy them back. Um, that's unlike debt. And dividends are only paid if the business is profitable, and unlike interest. So if your business is not profitable, you don't pay dividends. Um, however, equity also gives foreign investors control over the business and gives them claims over future profits if the business is successful. So that's the downside of equity. Um, as a result, and together with the availability of overseas loans, net foreign equity has fallen from 16% of GDP in 1981 to 4% of GDP in 2013. We did see that the, the level of equity as a proportion of GDP had actually declined slightly. It had declined from a much more significant proportion, you know, 16%. Compare that in uh, 1981 to debt. Debt was 6%, equity was 16%. So most of Australia's net foreign liabilities were equity. Today, Net foreign um, equity is 4% of GDP, net foreign debt, 50% of GDP. So it's predominantly debt. You've seen this shift from one to another. We did see that um, in the long-term graph just earlier. But isn't that good? Is that good? Does that not mean we have control over our domestic profits? It does. It means we have more control over our domestic businesses um, and, and future profits. Uh, but it's only good as long as Australian businesses do well. If they fail, we have to pay back the loans and they get access to whatever collateral um, they have. With equity, the foreign investor loses that. So it's all about risk. How much risk is the country going to take on? At the moment, Australia is taking on a lot of risk. Spain, Greece, Iceland, um, uh, Ireland, they took on a lot of risk. They took on a lot of debt. It did not work out for them. So that is, that is the risk.